Hi everyone! Welcome to Live, Laugh, and Cook Italian with me, Kenny Palazzolo. For those of you who don't know me, I was born and raised in the north end of Boston in Little Italy. I'm president of Madonna del Socorso Society. We run the Fisherman's Feast of Boston, which is Boston's oldest and longest running Italian festival at 109 years. I now live in North Reading with my family for the past 17 years. And I was lucky enough in 2017 to appear on Gordon Ramsay's The F Word Live with my cousins. We were the Italian Stallions. And this year I was lucky enough to get one of those coveted white aprons on MasterChef Season 10. That being said, the question that everybody has for me, how do you make your gravy? So today is going to be the secret of the Italian gravy. Now I know some people call it sauce. Some people call it marinara. I definitely don't want to fight anybody over the subject, and I'm certainly not looking for any hate mail. My great-grandmother, she lived to be 108. She came from Avellino. Her name was Adelina Cilo. She was a school teacher in Italy. She, she taught Italian. When she came here to America, her translation of sugo in English was gravy. Yours might be sauce. It might be marinara. Doesn't matter. Here to Live, Laugh, and Cook Italian, the red stuff, we call it gravy. So now we're going to get started on the classic Italian gravy and how my great-grandmother from Avellino made it. I hope you enjoy. You don't have to run out and get a pen and a piece of paper because all these ingredients and everything I'm going to do is going to be on the Live, Laugh, and Cook Italian Facebook and Instagram pages so you can go there and get the recipes later. time to enjoy. What we have here is we have two cups of finely chopped onions, we have two heaping tablespoons of garlic, we have probably a good two cups of fresh basil, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and basil leaves. Every can of tomatoes has a different flavor profile. For me, I like my kitchen ready. I have six cans of kitchen ready, I have one can of whole tomatoes pastine, and two tutorosa puree. For me, the magic number is nine cans. It's usually a nine can gravy. Sometimes it's eight, sometimes it's ten. But the magic number is usually nine. With those nine cans comes four cans, twelve ounces of paste. I use three contadina and one pastine. Again, that's my flavor profile. Every can of tomato has a different flavor profile. Sometimes my mother, she'll use a Cento, she'll use a Renzini. It's kind of whatever she has. For me, this is, this is the way it is. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put these two finely chopped onions in the pan. Along with those two heaping tablespoons of garlic. And we're going to hit that with some olive oil. And get that going. And I'll tell you, this is going to cook a good 15-20 minutes. Almost to mush. I'm going to give that like a four. You got to make sure you got enough oil in there. Okay. Alright. So, while those are going, they're going to be a while. The way my great-grandmother did it, is she seasoned by the can. So no matter how many cans you used, you always had the proper seasoning. So what we're going to do is, come on close. Now, you know, my mother, when I learned this recipe, the basil, it's a teaspoon, a couple of shades. But the salt, it was this much. And I go, Ma, how much is that much? It's that much. Okay, so here we go. Every can gets that much salt. Probably pretty close to a teaspoon, but you know, this is the Italian way. So, every can gets the same amount. So it doesn't matter if you've got 8 cans, 10 cans, 12 cans. It's always going to be seasoned the same. Then you come in with your pepper. Right? I give about six, 6 or 8 taps in there. Alright, 
And then we hit it with our garlic powder. Not too much, you know, a little shake. Don't forget, we got two heaping tablespoons of garlic in there already. A little bit of garlic powder adds that different flavor. Then, the only thing that we actually measure is the basil. Teaspoon of basil in every one. Okay guys, you see this? This has been going about no, almost 20 minutes and like I said, almost mush. The garlic isn't brown and you really don't want it to brown, but you certainly want this to be very well cooked. Okay. And the next sequence is very important. Alright, come in here. What you need to do, get all these onions on one side, get all that oil. Alright, because you're going to use that oil to get all the paste out of the can. So you oil up your spoon and you start. Give it some oil. If you don't oil up your spoon before you go in to get this paste, you're never going to get it off. Because this is sticky stuff. A little bit of oil right in there. Back to the oil. Great grandmother called this making the paste. You make a paste before you actually start the gravy. Once you get all that paste in there, mix it up real good with those onions and garlic and oil, and you fry it a little bit. But you gotta keep stirring it because this stuff will burn very quickly. Get it all mixed up, and I mean. You can leave it for 15, 20 seconds at a time and let that bottom start to fry, but that's about it. Okay, after a couple of minutes of frying that paste, the first can we're going to add is the whole tomato can. You gotta crush those up first. So, your masher, your whole tomato can goes in. Now you hit those just with a mash. Every whole tomato. Okay, and in they go. get them in there as quick as possible because you want to start stirring up that paste because it's still sitting at the bottom frying on top of all of this gravy okay so now we give that a mix real good and make sure you get all the bottom of that paste up You know some people they don't use paste and they just use tomatoes and like my great-grandmother did she uses the paste and then adds water to thin it out I guess it's your own preference but this is the way I was taught to make it all right this is another art form see all that that's what we're getting out so here we go And you get the next can. Same thing. 
All right, so your can is now empty. And that goes. All right, and now we are going to take mm, about that much. How much is that much? 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 About that much. But that's about it. Right in. And I'm going to save that little bit for when the gravy is done. I'm going to put that in at the end when it cools right there. And I'm going to put that off to the side. Now, I've seen a lot of people use a lot of different things in their gravy to get the acid out. People put a potato, some people put a carrot, I've seen people put wine, all different kinds of things. There's one surefire way to get the acid out of your gravy, and that's the way my great-grandmother did it. And I, I've met a lot of Italians in my day, and no one seems to know this trick. I'd love to know where my great-grandmother came up with it, but when she came here from Avellino, this is the way she did it. Baking soda. So. For those of you who have seen it, if your car battery has acid on the top of it, that green stuff, you mix some of this up with some water and you pour it on top and you watch all that fizz and the baking soda just eats that acid away. It's going to eat the acid in that gravy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two heaping teaspoons into the can. All right, we're going to hit it with a little bit of water. All right. And watch this. You see that fizz? The same fizz that you would see on the top of your battery and all that acid, this is the same fizz. That fizz is the baking soda eating the acid away in your gravy. This gravy is so acid free, you could get a bowl and eat it like a, like a bowl of tomato soup. You will never get agita from this gravy, because there it is. All that fizz right there, that's the baking soda eating all that acid. And it adds sweetness. So there's no sugar, there's no potato, there's no carrot, there's no wine, there's no nothing. Two heaping teaspoons of baking soda will completely remove the acid from this gravy. Trust me. Okay, so we're gonna give this a good stir until all that fizz is gone. I mean, you really gotta work it in. You see, it's still fizzing because there's a lot of gravy in here. There's a lot of acid in there, believe me. You don't want it. You don't wanna wake up at two o'clock in the morning with that burning in your chest looking at your wife going, where's the Tums? Because that's no good. Okay, so, put all that acid out, and now what we're going to do is we're going to put this on about four, and of course, a gravy, it doesn't boil, it pops. When a gravy's cooking, it pops. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on about four, I'm going to cover it, and every eight minutes we're going to come back and stir it until it's at a pretty good pop. So we'll be back as soon as it's popping. Here we are. Let's come and take a look. See that? It's popping. So, what we're going to do is we're going to give it a stir. We're going to lower it to like two. And we're going to let this cook a couple of hours. You know, funny story. We used to cook our gravy five, six hours. It'd stay on the stove all day. And then one day, my mother's friend, Father Claudio, came here from Italy. He sat down at my mother's table, down the cake. He took one fork full, and he says, Hey, Susan, you cook your gravy too long. He says, Italy, two hours. My mother called me up. She said, Kenny, Father Claudio said we only have to cook the gravy for two hours. So the next gravy I made, I cooked it about two, two and a half hours, and you know something? It was cooked. So the days of keeping the gravy on the stove, five, six hours, you really don't need to. We're going to lower it to two we're going to give it a simmer. We're going to stir it about every 10-15 minutes so it doesn't stick. Now listen, 
If you have gravy sticks in the bottom of the pan, do not scrape it. Do not scrape it because that burnt taste and all those little bits of burnt stuff are going to go through your gravy and you might as well throw it away. If your gravy sticks, and I'm talking sticks hard where it's burnt, take a ladle, take a new pan, ladle out all the loose gravy on the top, leave that burnt stuff and just keep cooking it. Do not stir that burnt stuff off the bottom of your gravy. You will ruin it. The best thing you can do is don't burn it. Don't burn your gravy. But if it should happen to stick there and burn, don't try to scrape it. You're going to ruin the whole thing. So when this is done, we'll be back with the final product. All right, everybody. Here we are, the final product. Come take a look. And there it is. That's been on about two and a half hours after it started popping. And you can see it has that, has that done look to it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take that, shut that off. Uh, I'm going to put it on the counter. Here's that basil that I told you I left out. I'm going to drop that in. I'm going to stir that in. And I'm going to let this sit oh, a good five, six hours. And then I'll section it off in plastic containers and freeze it for later use. I hope you all enjoyed that, everybody. And don't forget to live, laugh, and cook Italian. Yeah.